Financial Ratios, Part 2, Chapter 4. After having gone through how to prepare balance sheet, income statement, common size balance sheet, common size income statement, and going through the key ratios such as liquidity ratios, which talk about uh, current obligations of a company, financial solvency ratio, which is talking about the debt obligations, both current and long term, in terms of the profitability period, as well as the asset management ratios, how a company manages its inventory receivables with respect to sales and uh, cost of goods sold. This presentation will now focus on the discussion further, that is, looking at performance ratios such as profitability, market value in terms of stock market, profitability in terms of inner, internal performance, and then merge them all into the DuPont analysis. So let's just quick recall, financial ratio is the ratio of how a certain financial aspect from either the balance sheet or the income statement such as the earnings before in interest in taxes or current assets, something like that, looks with respect to another such aspect of balance sheet or income statement. We have seen that there are five types of ratios, liquidity, solvency, asset management, and then now we're going to talk about profitability ratios, market value ratios, and DuPont analysis. So let's go to profitability ratios. Profitability ratios essentially talk about profits or net in income or profit after tax or income after tax. So that profit margin is the ratio of that profit divided by the top line. So bottom line divided by top line. But bottom line as in net income or profit after tax or earnings after tax divided by the revenue or sales. Then there's return on assets, which is the same profits divided by total assets on the balance sheet of that company and then return on equity which is again total profits divided by owner's capital so let's look at these with respect to our airlines mkz and kmz so first let's look at mkz airlines remember mkz airlines had the bigger balance sheet its current assets were 8,200, total long-term assets were 56,200, and balance sheet size or total asset size was 64,500. Compared with KMZ Airlines, which was some smaller, it had current assets of 875, long-term assets of 3,252, and total assets of 4,127. Now with that in mind, let us go and analyze the profit margin. So remember, MKZ Airlines had a revenue of 47,000. Cost of goods sold, almost 50% of that. Selling general and administrative expenses of 14,800. So a third of that of sales. Depreciation expense, which gave us a difference of 6,528, which is earnings before interest and taxes, minus the interest expense will give us the earnings before taxes. So EBIT minus interest expense will give us the EBT minus the tax expense will give us the net income or the net profit or earnings after taxes. All can be used interchangeably for the word net income. So we now talk about profit margin. Profit margin is the ratio of that net income or earnings after tax or net profit divided by the total sales. So G11 divided by G2, net income divided by total revenue. And so this is essentially a common size income statement item, which is basically the profit margin. So it's 10.14%. Then return on assets is now a merger or a mixture of income statement. So the net profit comes from income statement and total asset size comes from the balance sheet. So G11, which is net income divided by total assets b12 will be the return on assets then return on equity would be the same g11 but this time will divide it by 
D11, total owner's equity. So net income divided by owner's equity is the rate of return on the owner's capital that the company gave back. So these numbers are respectively 10%, 10.14%, 7.39%, and 31%. These numbers are slight, as expected, will be different for our um, KMZ airline, the other airline, or the smaller airline. It doesn't tell us anything really substantial, but it just tells us that it's not as profitable as MKZ airlines. So if you put it in a summary here, profit margin for MKZ, the larger airline, is larger, return on asset is larger, return on equity is larger, which kind of gives us a feeling that maybe the airline sector depends on this larger size to be more profitable. That could be one of the outcomes of this analysis. Moving on to the market value ratio. So here is the performance of that company on stock markets with respect to a perspective from the investor. So the first thing that investors usually look for is how much did the uh, company get in terms of profits per unit shares outstanding. This is called earnings per share. So it's net income, net profit divided by total number of shares outstanding. The next ratio is price to earnings ratio, which is the earnings per share, which is in the denominator. We just calculated that. And it's the share price divided by earnings per share. So how many dollars am I paying per unit profit per unit share? And that tells us whether the stock is really expensive or not. If I, if we are paying too much in terms of share price for the same unit of profit, it could be that the company is overpriced or it could be that the company might be uh, expected to have higher future earnings or income or uh, profit. And to discount for that future earnings, we have a price to earnings growth ratio. So it's this called PEG ratio. And the formula is the same. It's price to earnings, but divided by earnings growth rate. And we had looked at earnings growth rate in the initial discussion, essentially how much have the profits grown year over year over a certain number of years. And if the earnings growth has been high, the company is on a high growth trajectory, its price to earnings growth ratio could tell us by being lower than the price to earnings ratio. So we'll see that once we go into our discussion of this ratio. All it says is high growth rate will imply that investors are still happy paying a higher price to earnings ratio because they know that the price, higher price is justifying the higher price to earnings ratio because of higher future expected earnings. So investors are ready to pay for higher profits in two years right now. Finally, the last market value ratio is the market to book value. So if the company were to be liquidated, then how much would be paid to shareholders is calculated by taking the difference of total assets and total liabilities. Whatever is left behind by definition is owner's equity. So this owner's equity, if we divide it by the number of shares outstanding gives us the book value of a share or book value per share. The market value of a share is the price we pay. So market value per share divided by book value is the market to book values. And these values can also vary wildly. High market to book values will indicate that the share is overpriced or may not be overpriced, it could be an industry trend. A low market to book value, on the other hand, could imply that the stock is undervalued or may not imply that. It depends on the sector. So let's analyze these ratios for MKZ and KMZ airlines. First, we'll look at MKZ airlines, the larger one. Once again, recall that market value ratio Earnings per share is directly calculated in G12. Let's look at G12 here. G12 is the 
G11 value that is net income or net earning divided by total number of shares outstanding. So G11 divided by G13. That's our earnings per share. Now remember we calculated this growth rate of earnings. It's just the difference in net income over so two periods of time. So percentage change in the net income. So G11 is this year's earnings. H11 was the last year's earnings divided by last year's earnings. So percentage change in net income is a growth of earnings. So according to this MKZ Airlines profits grew by 21%. So let's talk about price to earnings ratio. The share price is given to be, let's stick here, the share price is G14 by G12. So share price is G14, which is $32, divided by the earnings per share, which is 16.17. So the earnings per share is 1.97. Price to earnings is 1.97, which is relatively cheap. Typically, price to earnings could vary between 7 and 20. But this is really low for MKZ Airlines. Next, we talked about price to earnings growth. Remember that it's price to earnings divided by the growth rate of share. So if the PE is itself so low, the PEG will be even lower. So it's only 0 0.09. So it's B39. We just calculated that um, PE ratio divided by G15. So that is 21%. So that's how we calculated the PEG value. So price to earnings growth is only 0 0.09. Lastly, the market to book value per share. So this is calculated by G13 times G14 divided by D11. So let's see, what is G13? G13 is the share price. Okay, so G13. And then G14 is the number of shares outstanding. So this share price times the number of shares outstanding gives us the market value of all the shares. The whole thing divided by owner's equity gives us the market to book value. So the ratio of market to book value is 0.6, meaning that the market has even not paid 100% of the book value to earn the shares of the this company. So MKZ Airlines potentially is underpriced, theoretically is underpriced. So let's translate these into how they look. KMZ is even lower. Its earnings per share is lower than MKZ, the larger airline. Its price to earnings though is higher. So investors are paying higher for every dollar of its earnings. Price to earnings growth really, like we saw, it's 9% for MKZ, but KMZ did not, actually its profits shrunk year over year. Could be an external reason, could be a shock, could be whatever but therefore the PEG ratio is negative. So that, therefore it makes sense to look at maybe a five-year trend to calculate the PEG rather than just a year-over-year -year trend because short-term blips could cause misunderstanding about a company's stock. Last, both of these have a market-to-book value less than one or 100%. So both of these could be theoretically be underpriced because investors think that these airlines are going to make some severe loss, which will lead to its erosion of owner's equity, which may or may not be true. So that's the explanation of market to book value. Now, let's move on to DuPont analysis. In the DuPont analysis, we have three different ratios being pulled over from three different categories. The first category is return on equity. So as you can guess, the top is net income, which means it's a profitability ratio. And then return on equity is net income divided by total equity. So we just break it up, net income divided by sales. So sales and sales will cancel. So, but sales divided by total assets is essentially the profit, uh, sorry, sale, asset turnover ratio. Total assets divided, by, sales divided by total assets. And then total assets divided by total equity is um, the ratio of asset, total balance sheet size of the company divided by shareholders equity. So the first ratio is profit margin. The second ratio is the asset turnover. 
and the third ratio is called equity multiplier. Now, why is total assets more than owner's equity? This is because the company has debt. The more debt the company has, very important, the more debt the company has, the more its balance sheet size will be. But having too much debt could be problematic. We will see this later on in this discussion in next few chapters. And that problem for that, uh, for having too much in terms of debt obligations is in case the company becomes slightly unprofitable, bondholders and lenders will line up to take their money back. And that's a really problem. Then that will have an impact directly on its equity prices also. So therefore, the company must be careful in how it positions its total debt to total equity. So total that, that we saw was the debt ratio, right? So equity multiplier is just another form of the debt ratio. Okay, so what we learn is the company should be able to manage its profit margin efficiently by cutting its costs. The company should be able to use its assets by turning over assets efficiently by maximizing its sales revenues per unit assets held in its balance sheet. And finally, the company must be able to use its financial leverage, that is take on optimal amount of debt to maximize the return on equity. And that's why this ana analysis is so powerful because it's merging one aspect of profitability, one aspect of efficiency, and one aspect of financial leverage, leverage as in equity multiplier to bring together the return on equity for shareholders. So operating efficiency, asset management efficiency, and financial leverage are the three aspects that it brings in together. Now let's look at DuPont analysis for MKZ Airlines. So the profit margin is, this is just a random thing, it's not 2014. The profit margin is 10%. So how did we get that? We get that by dividing total Profit divided by total sales. So G14 or no, G11 divided by G2. Okay, moving on to asset turnover. Sales divided by assets. G2 was the sales. B12 was the total assets. So G2, total sales. And B12 is the total assets. So that's the asset turnover. Finally, the financial leverage. Wow, this company is really levered. So B12 divided by D11. What is B12? B12 is total assets divided by D11 is owner's equity. So total assets are almost four times the owner's equity. So it's really playing on financial leverage, taking on lots of debt. As you can see here, 50,000 out of 65,000 is in debt or borrowing. And long-term liabilities forms a large part of that. So 30 divided by 64, almost 50% of its total balance sheet is long-term liabilities, which is good and bad, we don't know. It depends on the time, the business cycle, etc. But bottom line is this, all of this gives it a very good return on equity of 31%. So if we go back, let's just compare the two airlines. We have profit margin that is higher for MKZ Airlines as compared to KMZ. We have asset turnover that is higher for MKZ Airlines as compared to KMZ. And we have financial leverage, which is almost the same for both. The, so both the airlines are highly levered, possibly because they have to take on a lot of long-term debt to buy aircraft. That's probably what explains why the financial leverage is so high. But then it all boils down to 31% return of equity for MKZ, the larger one, as compared to 21% for 20.7% for KMZ Airlines. So you can see the aspects of asset turnover and more so the profit margin, which is kind of pulling KMZ back on the profitability firm. That's the power of the DuPont analysis. Okay, moving on. So financial ratios tell us a lot of powerful stories about the firm over time or firm between two firms. So these ratios can vary a lot across industries depending on the way these industries operate, depending on stuff like 
how much borrowing cost, how much do they need to borrow, how often do they need to borrow, not all firms borrow at the same profile, how to manage their cash. So for example, an insurance company will get lots of small cash inflows, but not very many cash outflows. Banks on the other hand need to churn out cash every day because there are depositors, there are borrowers and so on and so forth. So cash management is a very important aspect in commercial banks. On the other hand, airlines, they will get cash revenues from their customers, but they seldom will make cash outflows on acquisition of new aircraft. If they do so, it will be a bulk order all at one time. So cash management becomes critical at that time. Then labor intensity. Some industries are highly labor intensive while others are not. For example, banking sector could be more computer dependent than medical sector like hospitals which might be more labor intense or for example software industry which could also be highly labor intense. So the last part is the competition. The competition as we saw both the KMZ and MKZ airlines had a high financial leverage because they wanted to operate is in as many sectors as they could so they were trying to take on debt aggressively as much as possible to deliver not only the value for their shareholders but also to become bigger and bigger so that they could acquire more and more customers and regulation. Transportation industries, banking sectors are highly regulated. Maybe fast moving consumer goods, not so regulated or maybe a medical sector highly regulated again. So it depends on which industry we're looking at the ratios and therefore these ratios can change wildly across these industries. To conclude, we saw that financial ratios are very useful tool in measuring a company's performance with respect to time as well as a company's performance with respect to another company. Profitability financial ratios that we saw in this presentation tell us the ability to generate profits of a company with respect to various other metrics from both balance sheet and income statement. Market value financial ratios are important for investors perspective and then DuPont analysis ratios combine um, aspects of the production department to manage assets, aspects of, of capital management department, markets department and top leadership essentially of a company for financial leverage and the profit margin largely sales, administrative, marketing, advertising department. That's chapter four, second part. Thank you for listening.